Good morning, y'all. Happy New Year to everyone. This is your host, Madhusudan Raj, and today I want to discuss some socio political economic issues that will affect our world, especially two countries, the USA and India. I want to focus on India today. Uh, USA, we will discuss some other time. So, we all know that in 2024, two crucial elections are coming up in world's two largest supposed democracies, India and USA. India is uh, going to for parliamentary elections, I think in the month of May, and USA will go for its presidential election in the month of November. Uh, I want to discuss what I think, what will happen uh, in India if the incumbent government of BJP Prime Minister Narendra Modi will uh, get re-elected by the voters. Now, these things are based on uh, my understanding of the working of this BJP government in the last uh, now 10 years. Also, uh, the state from where Narendra Modi comes, I used to live there. I spent my 45 years of life in that place, uh, out of which 25 years were under the chief ministership of Narendra Modi. So I <clears throat> kind of understand the nature of this man and the nature of uh, the ideological backers of the uh, BJP and the I ideological institution, the RSS that made Narendra Modi. So based on that, uh, I just want to discuss a few things that I expect to do. Uh, the chances of that happening if Narendra Modi wins uh, his re-election bid in India this year. Because, you know, uh, I read a couple of days back that in the newspapers that the re-election of Narendra Modi is kind of inevitable, especially after the uh, win of his BJP party in some of the state elections last year in November, December. So we all know that in last state elections, Modi's BJP party won in Rajasthan, besetting the incumbent Congress government. They also won in Madhya Pradesh, as well as they grabbed, took away the power from the ruling Congress party in uh, Chhattisgarh. So they won these three major Hindi cowbelt states and based on those victories the media pundits and so-called experts are saying that the win of Narendra Modi looks like you know inevitable so let's see if he revins you know he wins his you know re-election bid again he comes back to power in 2024 around May or June what is likely to happen based on whatever is already happening first thing what will happen politically is that his attacks on the southern states will increase because Narendra Modi wants to centralize all the powers into his own hands. Remember, he is a dictator. He's a fascist di dictator. He's been funded by his cronies like uh, the Adanis and the Yambanis and Tatas and Billas and all these people. So there is a nexus between them. You know, he is giving them the rewards for funding his political bids. So what I expect is that his attacks on the southern states will increase because his inner desire is to centralize all the powers into his own hands. Plus, his ideological backers, the RSS, we all know that they also have the goal, the dream of Akhan Bharat. And Akhan Bharat means whatever the concept of ancient India, which you know they think was under their rule, beginning from the boundaries of Afghanistan, including Pakistan and Tibet and Bangladesh and Nepal and Bhutan and Burma and up to Vietnam and Thailand. So that is what is their vision, RSS vision of Akhand Bharat, a united India. So that is impossible, you know, because uh, the Indian military cannot fight all this battle and win all this battle. So, but they will try to grab all the states in India, 
you know for their power so the goal will be heavy centralization of the indian polity and the society and the economy whatever is already going on those trends will continue remember the you know indian subcontinent you know because the indian republic and Re republic came into existence only in 1947 before that there was no india per se there was only this subcontinent which was ruled by 565 different kingdoms at the time of so called independence so and if you read the ancient scriptures you know if you read vedas for example uh, like Ramayana or Mahabharata or other four Vedas or Upanishadas, all these scriptures, then you find that the subcontinent was basically divided between what they call in Sanskrit language the Uttarapath and the Dakshinapath. So from the Vindhyachal <coughs> mountain ranges close to uh, Madhya Pradesh, the southern territory of India starts the what they call the Dakshinapath. And the area above that, the area of Punjab and the Ganga Jamna or Ganga Yamuna Doab was known as the Uttarapath, where most of the you know politics was happening back then. Magadh was the you know biggest ruling empire uh, under the nuns and then the Mauryan Empire and the Gupta Empire and all that. So so we clearly see that division again coming into existence after Britishers went away and the so-called 75 years of independence, we see that southern states, they don't like what the northerners are doing. They don't like the politics of northern people they, because the cultures are completely different. The language is completely different. The food habits are completely different. The overall culture, the religion is, you know, although they are, you know, they have Hinduism, but lo you know, a lot of Christians are there, a lot of Muslims are there, and they are also not, like not the followers of this Hindutva ideology of BJP and RSS. For them, Hinduism is something very different. So the southern states are now being ruled by non-BJP parties. We see that Congress is getting a stronghold in the southern states and BJP is having a very strong hold in the northern states. All the cow belt or the Hindi belt where you know Hindi is the uh, majority language, although not the only language. So Karnataka is in the hands of Congress, Telangana, you know, Congress won power in Telangana recently. <laughs> Tamil Nadu is ruled by the local parties. I think DMK. Uh, and Kerala is uh, ruled by the communist. Andhra Pradesh, which was divided between Telangana and other, they have local, you know, ruling party also. So we can see that the Congress is getting a. Str it's 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 you know it it feels as if you know Congress's stronghold is now going to be the southern state. Rahul Gandhi is also now you know fighting his you know election bids from the southern states kerala and Wayanad, because he the traditional seat of a Amethi in Uttar Pradesh was no longer with them but anyway so what I'm saying is this division of India taking place the Indian subcontinent taking place it is reverting back to its original history where it was never ruled by one person so Narendra Modi and RSS they don't like it they want to grab power everywhere they want to be the maharaja the raj they want to be the chakravarti in samrat so their attacks on the southern states will increase they will use whatever by hook or by crook they're already doing that in tamil nadu we can see that they're using the governor to harass the local government they are using the finance commissions to deprive the states of central funds the southern economies they contribute more in the uh, central funds than the hindi belt you know cow belt states like uh, bihar and uh, up and madhya pradesh and rajasthan so they are using this finance commissions to deprive the southern states of all the funds so they want southern states to become poor and they're harassing them this harassment will continue in future also if Narendra Modi wins election his re-election and he will try to grab power in those states by hook or by crook and that's only going to increase the tension 
between these states. North is also, we know that it is a separate problem of its own and that will continue uh, in Manipur and other places because the, the politics of Narendra Modi is of divide and rule basically. The, his policy is of hatred. So he pitches one group of people against the other group of people and then uh, tries to win, you know, stay in power by using these groups against each other. So that's what he's going to do and he, he already has started his uh, efforts to win power in South state. He recently had his road show and everything in, in the state of Kerala because Kerala you know, presents a very formidable challenge to his power. Uh, Tamil Nadu also. Uh, so he is trying every bit hard to get power over there. Uh, we don't know what is going to happen whether because if I see if I, I saw the data of last election and uh, I think he got almost zero you know seats from those southern states and I guess it will likely to continue the southern states are never going to vote for him and his policies. So what he will do he will try to arm twist them and use his power to this you know dislodge the governments there he might try to impose governor's rule also he's he's doing the same thing with the west bengal right now he's trying every bit hard to you know win power there because the Bengalis they did not uh, vote for him in last um, election so that you you know uh, that i expect to continue and that will create more tension and kind of a civil war kind of a situation the southern state must prepare for this takeover. If they are not ready, Narendra Modi and Amit Shah, these people can do anything to grab power. Don't, you know, if you think the constitution or the courts, the Supreme Court will help the southern states, we already seeing that they are not going to do anything like that. They are in the pockets of Narendra Modi. He has centralized all these institutions, RBI, judiciary, or parliament he's not allowing parliament to run and whatever he doesn't care about constitution and everything so i think the southern states must prepare for this onslaught uh in 2024 if narendra modi wins his re-election win. economy wise the same mindless policies like the demonetization or gst will continue he will continue to load up on debt and he will continue to spend on this so-called infrastructure projects, extravagant bundugals. Uh, he's, you know, IMF has already warned that the, the debt GDP ratio of India can easily cross 100% in the near future. Already the bond ratings of India are close to junk rating. They are all very, you know, high risk bonds. So we don't know, you know, who's going to lend them, uh, lend the Indian government in future. So what he will do is he will continue to arm twist, you know, because RBI is in his pocket. So he will continue to uh, use RBI to print rupees and continue to create inflation. So we expect uh, more and more inflation in future. Prices of everything will continue to go through the roof. And as I said, he will continue to wreck the economy by spending. Is crowding out the private investment stock market is zooming is simply because it's showing the inflation basically stock market prices are showing the inflation whatever money RBI is printing is going into the stock market and that is the reason why the prices of the stocks are going up although the real underlying value of all these companies is nothing much they don't offer any real values just paper values going up so the stock market is in a huge bubble because all the money is going there and in in future this bubble will pop and that will create huge recessionary you know problem for india and as i said we don't know what kind of mindless other policies he will bring and in terms of foreign policy also his government is a disaster the relationship of india indian government the indian nation state with its neighboring countries is all very bad with Nepal or with Pakistan or or with uh, Maldives now uh, even small places like Maldives are having issues with India and of course the battle going on with I mean China literal fighting with armies every now and then we don't know how much land Chinese has uh, Chinese government grabbed in those 
um, bordering area. So what I, f what I feel is that if Narendra Modi wins election back, I fear that the onslaught of grabbing power from the southern states will incre increase and southern states if they want to survive they will have to get united and fight back they need a leader who can rally all those states because remember all these southern states are also fighting in between so they need a charismatic leader somebody like Narendra Modi who can gather everyone and you know barricade themselves and you know just defend themselves against this center central government of Narendra Modi also I don't know whether that is going to happen or not but if they want to survive they will have to do this they will have to get away from the center they will have to devise their own policies they will have to think stop giving so much of importance to constitution and supreme court and all that because the central government of Narendra Modi is not worrying about all these things so uh, I don't know how much they are going to continue to fight in a legal way uh, because ultimately Indian sub subcontinents his you know destiny will be decided by violence only I know that uh, so there will be these kind of problems uh, anyway uh, so I wanted to discuss all these things and if Narendra Modi loses power let's say for example because if nothing is inevitable even then the situation will not improve too much uh, it will definitely be some improvement as as long as the politics is concerned but all the parties in India Congress or BJP or you know, all other local ruling parties they all follow socialist ideology and the last thing that India needs is socialism because India's problem is not its secular you know constitution its problem is its socialist constitution because remember the so-called founding fathers they decided that India is going to be a socialist secular democratic republic country so that socialist is a problem secular is not a problem as long as uh, successive governments will continue to follow the socialist ideas central planning and all that heavy centralization situation for the you know, common Indians is not going to improve because a socialist economy and a collective society cannot produce wealth cannot produce prosperity cannot provide justice or peace for the world so even if congress wins back power i don't see much of improvement taking place in the life of an average indian uh, on the political front we may not see this you know heavy you know fighting between the southern and the northern states but i don't see much of an improvement as long as socialism continues to rule that place anyway i will come back again and discuss more after the elections are over and the results are out after the results are out i will discuss what is likely to happen based on those results so thank you very much for watching me and i'll see you next time bye bye